Hello and greetings fellow StarCrafters and welcome back to game number three between the red Protoss player up here in the upper right corner, I guess the 230 position or so, Rain Kiwikaki, and the blue Zerg player who is going to be in the bottom position, which I guess is the 830 position, Complexities MVP Dong Regu, Colonel Dong Regu. So, uh, we saw a series of all-ins from Dong Regu in that previous game. Uh, kind of a curious choice as, I mean, that map, the, the bonus to that map is that when you do a Forge Fast Expand, you can actually, you have the ramp to help defend it because uh, it's possible to lay your buildings in such a way that, you know, you can defend it, which c makes it harder to all-in, but also means that Kiwikaki won't necessarily be suspecting an all-in. And even though it looked like Kiwikaki actually wasn't suspecting an all-in, he was just uh, suspecting, you know, the triple three base thing, which is why he sent the four zealots out. Um, it looks like he was able to hold that off successfully, that first kind of roach all-in, and... And then, you know, he was just able to pull out the game as the, he suspected uh, correctly right after that that the Nidus Canal would come next as the natural follow-up. And Don Regu went for the Nidus Canal and he failed pretty mightily in that Nidus Canal. There were just so many forest fields that Colossus was out. Another Colossus was on its way. And, you know, tons of gateway forces uh, just kind of defending that base. And even when he was able to snipe the Overs here despite the prevalence of, like, you know, 12 Hydras or whatever. So... Remains to be seen. It looks like the players are opting for the exact same builds that they did in the previous game. This neutral supply depot is not going to prevent Kiwikaki from creating his own little wall here on top of this ramp as he is going for the Forge Fast Expand again. Meanwhile, Dong Regu is going for the Speedling Expand again. Again, the Speedling Expand does give him the flexibility of being able to uh, go for that all-in as he already has the gas available and he's going to have the early speed which is going to help him with any sort of all-in. While, of course, it does sacrifice just a little bit of economy as your mineral count will be lower than... You know, even if you think the probe is going to block, you can just get a pool without gas and then get two quick hatcheries. The other thing you can do is actually just build a hatchery right here. As if you're going for a heavy economy build, uh, you're going to want three hatcheries right away anyway. So it doesn't particularly matter which one's the natural and which one's the third. So you can just go ahead and build a hatchery in a separate location if you're opting for that. But Dongregu is not opting for that this game. Now, the important thing to see is if he's going to pull his drones off of gas right now. So we're going to have to wait and see. That looks like that Nexus is going down for Kiwikaki, as well as a nice pylon right here, preventing any lings from getting around the back of his base. And a cannon should be going down pretty soon as well. And then that will be followed by a gateway. Looks like these uh, Zerglings are just hatching right now. The cannon will be finished before they arrive, so do not fear. Looks like this probe is going to have to be chased away just a little bit by these Zerglings. And, and, ooh, two cannons right away. Okay, so, oh, well, I think the reason he's getting two cannons is this map has kind of a wider open area, so you really need two cannons to actually adequately defend your nexus against Zerglings, as I don't think this cannon reaches that corner. Uh, so just to make sure the Zerglings don't get any kind of free hits or anything, it can be kind of difficult to get a cannon up if you wait. So we actually got two cannons before Gateway, being pretty safe. I actually like that move quite a bit. Um, and getting a second gateway. So it looks like it's a build similar to the one he did in the first game where he's going to try to chrono boost out a number of zealots after that. This photon cannon is going to go ahead and focus fire the neutral supply depot. Now you may ask, why is he killing the neutral supply depot? He doesn't need to wall himself in. However, if let's say the zerglings are trying some sort of quick rush in or something like that, then what Kiwikaki can do is response to that, build a pylon here, or build a gateway here or something like right away. If he's quick enough, that will allow him to do that and We'll have to do that, and then it will be able to save his main base from, you know, a Zergling run by. Ooh, I like this from Dong Regu. So Dong Regu is, in fact, opting for a natural expansion at the gold. So he's going to get his first hatchery at the gold. He will probably get a second hatchery here as well fairly soon. I would say, I mean, he has the minerals right now, but maybe he's just trying to produce as many drones as possible. And, oh, he's transferring. Look at how many drones he's transferring. He's transferring 11 drones over to that area. Wait, did, did Kiwikaki see that? No, Kiwikaki has not seen that. I saw the Zerglings rushing around. I, I, I didn't know if a probe had like, snuck in or something. So, a ton of drones are going to be transferred over here. Now, this is going to be a huge boost to mineral income. This is going to allow Dong Regu to get very far ahead in the economy, similar to the Shattered Temple game, but even faster because his first base is actually going to be at the gold. Now, one benefit to Kiwikaki in this matter is that he's going to have so many zealots and so as long as he his zealots will be able to overpower those zerglings and will probably be able to take the watchtower as long as he gets a couple more zealots out and sends them along with his original zealot looks like his original zealot is uh maybe able to micro against these zerglings oh and the zerglings are going to give a vision Kiwikaki sees exactly what's going on and he even sees the drone count right now so he's gonna have to try to decide how to go from here 
Looks like he is going to Chrono Boost out some more Zealots and see if they can cause some damage. Uh, probably Dong Ragu might want to get a Spine Crawler or maybe just opt for a Roach Warren. As he has stopped getting his gas, he's just starting getting his gas again and is opting, there you go, for the Roach Warren as we see. Um, no spine crawler as of yet. He does have two queens and he's spreading his creep just a little bit. That's going to help him in co any sort of combat situation right there. Meanwhile, Dongrigu also sees the timing of the cybernetic score, so he knows not to be afraid of any sentries quite yet. That is one disadvantage to the double gateway heavy zealot opening, is it greatly delays the speed at which you can acquire your uh, cybernetic score and your gas. Uh, especially so your gas is going to be delayed means you won't have warp gates as quickly it also means you won't be able to get any stalkers which are going to be necessary against any sort of roach as your opponent is going looks like uh, down right you oh poor zergling you can see his little rotting corpse right there um, these zealots are going to move out. Now there is a, as I was saying, there is a spine crawler right here and um, no roaches on the way quite yet. Those zealots will cause some damage. I'm not sure exactly how much quite yet. Um, none of these queens have a transfuse luckily, but if they survive long enough for the transfuse, oh it actually, if he gets a surround right here that's going to be absolutely big. Uh, looks like he is able to take out three zealots right there and the other three zealots will probably be able to run away. Maybe the zerglings will decide to chase them back all the way home and in fact they will. And that was actually a pretty poor trade for Kiwikaki. He's now down by 20 supply and Dongragu's natural is up and ready to go. So if we look at the drone count right now, uh, worker count is actually fairly even. But if we go to the mineral count, mineral count is... Oh, actually also fairly even. Huh. Is the saturation just worse? I'm a little confused. Alright, now his, now his mineral count is ahead. Maybe he moved his drones just a little bit. Um, he was doing a transfer or something. His mineral count is going to be about 200, 300 higher per minute as a result of having those gold minerals. And now it's going to be even higher as a result of having that natural expansion right there. So Kiwikaki's going to have to see uh, exactly what he's planning to do about that. Looks like this overlord is actually going to be very well timed. And see the building of five gateways. Um, and actually, is it spotted, all five of them? Yep, it has spotted all five of the gateways as well as the robotics. There are two other gateways, which means that this is most likely going to be a seven gate all in. That is most likely what we are going to be seeing at this point in time. Looks like that stalker is going to go ahead and take out that overlord right there. Boom, that overlord explodes. And Dongregu should probably be able to see this coming as a result of... Oh, looks like that cannon actually was blocking... Oh, is this additional cannon back up here was actually blocking unit movement maybe? Huh. Actually, it didn't look like it was really blocking unit movement, but I guess it was. A bunch more additional forces are being laid right now. The probe has come out in order to actually brought two probes. Maybe he's opting, oh, he's opting just for one probe right here. That Zelda's going to come down just to make sure there's no shenanigans. Ready for a counterattack right here. Looks like he's going to move his forces up there. And get one Zergling, two Zerglings, three Zerglings. And uh, those Zerglings probably shouldn't have engaged right there as he lost all of his Zerglings right there. Look at all this creep spread though. Very nice job from Dongrigo. He's just so many Queens right now and all these Roaches are out right now. Which means that... Kiwikaki is going to have to try to engage these roaches on top of creep as there's really going to be no way of avoiding it. He can kill the creep tumors, but it won't be gone in time. Nice job canceling so we can lay some new additional creep tumors should he choose to do so. Also, nice pylon placement will allow him to attack right away. And looks like Kiwikaki is just going to send one zealot up there. That's going to take out that uh, zergling. Probably going to want to... There you go. Kill the zergling. Is going to have vision of this entire area. We'll see exactly what's going on right now. And the observer has spawned as well, so he was able, able to take out that creep. And actually, it looks like he is going to be opting for a third base. Um, I think maybe he was just trying to make it seem like he was potentially going for an all-in to try to lower the amount of Dongregu's production of drones and change it towards Roaches and Zerglings, which is not going to be quite so useful because you can't really all-in. Well, you can't. I mean, you could do a really big attack with Roaches, obviously. But with so many opponents in centuries, if they're in a good defensible position, it can be difficult sometime in order to try to attack. Looks like Dongrigu is going to be going for that very attack that I just cautioned him against. So a lot of this is going to depend on Kiwikaki's force fields right here. We also see a Spire is going to be on the way, but actually he's not actually holding on to that much gas. So he is only going to be able to get three or four uh, Mutalists right away. That Spire might have been possible, possibly built for the potential of Colossus. If any Colossus should come out for Kiwikaki, he's going to need some Corruptors to deal with those. Looks like this base has been built up and he does have four additional gateways. So it's a total of 11 gateways right now, which is, it is possible to produce off of 11 gateways on four, on three bases. Um, but it is not, it's not like, like, I think that would have to be all of your resources if you were doing that. Maybe that's possible? I think it might be. Alright, looks like Dongrigu is going to go ahead and move in. Nice force fields right there, exactly what he needed to do. Able to cordon off a small section of Dongrigu's army. 
He's trying to run away with those roaches. They're not going to be able to get away. Those stalkers from behind are dealing a lot of extra damage as well as that immortal. He's going to opt for, a, opt for another immortal right now. It looks like Dogrigu is going to go ahead and shift down here and try to attack right up here. That's not going to be very successful though, at least in the short term, because there are a bunch of stalkers warping in from behind and gateways blocking his path. He will be able to focus fire that cannon down, but that's not going to do him all that much world of a good. As there are a bunch of stalkers behind, it looks like these roaches are trying to move in as well. Some nice force fields able to prevent any real solid engagements from Dong Ragu. And this is exactly what I was talking about in terms of engaging an army that is very high in century counts at this point in time. Look at that piece flying all the way down there. Boom! That piece that dissolves into the earth. Or teleports back or something uh, not quite sure about. Looks like Dong Ragu is actually opting to attack up top again. So Kibukaki is going to want to send some stalkers back down. But he's changed his mind. Nope, not quite. He's going to be able to focus on that. Ooh, nice cancels. However, it is unfortunately going to let his opponent's roaches into his base, and they are going to get another gateway. Fortunately for Kiwikaki, he has a lot of gateways right now, so he should be safe from any of those sorts of shenanigans. Looks like these Mutalists have moved through, though. Scared away any of the probes that have been hanging out here, and actually... Nope, uh, I don't think they got too many probes killed. We can go to the Workers Lost tab. 15 Workers killed, so he did actually get a decent amount of Workers there with those Mutalists, but Kiwikaki was able to transfer a good amount of them back down, and now they will be going back to work once that Blink finishes and will allow Kiwikaki to much better defend his area. Looks like this little area, is, uh, this little base section is going to have to be rebuilt as well. As it has a nice little uh, gateway wall right here, but it keeps getting taken down by those by those dirty, dirty roaches that keep on climbing through. It looks like Thailand Claws is going to be finished right now. That's going to be primarily for healing at this point, as any, um, as we already see that there is an observer already out for Kubikaki. Looks like Dog Ragu is actually going to move in one more time for this final attack. Kubikaki has no idea that this is coming. Some very nice force fields are going to have to be placed right here. And uh, some okay force fields. Uh, not quite blocking out the Zerglings like he really needs to do. There you go. Yeah, those are some money force fields right there. And he's actually doing a lot of damage to those Mulus right now. Those force fields are really stopping Dong Ragu from moving forward and engaging that area. That Overlord did get taken out by those uh, Stalkers right there. And actually looks like Kiwikagi is going to be able to go on the offensive right now. As Dong Ragu has thrown away a good amount of units. However, the Mutalists are going to go through and ravage these probes yet again. Some additional Stalkers have blinked into the main and are going to be able to scare those Mutalists away. But unfortunately for Kiwikaki, that's not really a long-term solution as he doesn't need to keep the vast majority of the Stalkers with his army as they have moved back into his army right now. Looks like Dongregu has chosen this moment to engage. A huge amount of Zerglings is absorbing a lot of the Stalkers' fire right now. Some Blink Biker right here is going to save a lot of the damage from those Stalkers. The Mutalists are joining, however, as well. And I'm not actually sure how this fight is going to go. It looks like the Roaches and the Mutalists are doing a pretty good job, but some additional Warpins from those fresh Stalkers should be instrumental in proving success for Rien Kiwikage. But it's actually way too far behind. Look at how many Zerglings are building right now for our Dongregu. 62 Zerglings on the way. He's now taken an 80 supply lead. So even though Rain Kiwikage was trading in somewhat, somewhat even terms, he was still probably losing more supply than his opponent was losing. His opponent was just able to remax that much more quickly. It's really the power of Zerg right there and the huge bank of resources that he was storing up. As you can see in the top right corner, he's got over a thousand resources, whereas Kiwikaki is almost out. And the Beatles are causing even more damage to his probe line. That's even more so going to be able to prevent Kiwikaki from being able to remax. And I'm not sure Kiwikaki really has enough juice left in this game to be able to to be able to take it. He's going to need some really monstrous force fields right now. It's like this creep field is finally drying up. Uh, nice job from Kiwikaki keeping observers with his units, able to take out those creep forces. But, I mean, like, it's three base on almost five base now. The force field's not quite there as the Zerglings were able to stream in. Uh, Zerglings being smaller, the Roaches are able to fit through those little holes and just kind of seep all around. It's almost like water pouring down a hole. It doesn't matter where the where the hole is, the water's going to find it. It's going to go ahead and slide down through, and the rest of the forces are just going to go ahead and crumble like the erosion of a river and a, on rocks or something like that. I'm not really sure what that metaphor is meant to say, but the point is that all these stalkers are being taken out by those Zerglings and those Roaches and those Metalists, which are doing a very nice job of pouncing through Kiwikaki's army, and Kiwikaki is going to have to GG out of this game. Very nice series from these players. We can actually see Drops was on the way. Is that right? Yeah, Drops was on the way uh, for Dong Ragu, so he was moving on to phase two of his little attack. If this attack did not prove successful, he'd be able to drop right into his opponent's base and cause a lot of damage that way. 
but he didn't need to. His uh, unit composition was just absolutely perfect right at the end. Those roaches were being tanked by the zerglings. The zerglings were causing a lot of damage themselves, and the mutilists were being tanked by both the roaches and the zerglings and causing a lot of damage as well. Uh, so very nice attack right at the end. Dong Regu just kept with his guns, kept on attacking, uh, forcing Kiwi Kaki to go both besides, and eventually just wore him out. And those mutilists just caused like so much economic damage that Kiwi Kaki just wasn't able to replenish his army. And Dong Regu was taken out. So very nice game from these players. Really glad to have casted this. And I will see you guys later. This is PGL Milncraft signing out.